Hello, Dr. Naranicki here from the Millis Institute. I'd like to go through two poems we looked at in a lecture today from uh, Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience. This text can be, well, this, this book is quite hard to get into, I, I think for young people particularly, because the first half of it, the Songs of Innocence, are given from often the perspective of a child. And this is part of the innovative aspect of Blake, that he's able to present a poem from the voice of a child. And for young people, you know, newly minted adults, imagining, well, getting into the head of a child, the voice of a child, is quite difficult. I myself really only uh, was able to appreciate this aspect of uh, Blake's work uh, after starting my own family and uh, being exposed to the, the way children uh, think and speak that, that kind of language and then it flips the second part of the, the book on uh, songs of experience really that's difficult as well because it's it involves a a highly acute moral vision or, or, or sensibility to suffering around and often in a developed Western society, um, we, we off, we're not confronted on a day-to-day -day level often with the kind of suffering that, that Blake was. Um, and, and, and for me, traveling overseas helped to open my eyes in that regard to see that, yes, there are many places in the world in which, uh, you, you know, you can, un unfortunately, you're confronted with uh, images of, of, of suffering uh, quite readily. So there's that aspect, trying to um, visualize the, 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 two, the, 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 the two, two aspects of, of human experience that, that Blake seeks to explore in this. So one, uh, having a, a, a childlike innocent vision uh, to explore um, his songs of innocence, and and then having a, a real um, morally confronting view of the su suffering of, of people in the world to to read the the songs of experience. So uh, let me go through uh, his poem, "The Lamb," from Songs of Innocence. Little lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee, gave thee life and bid thee free, freed by the stream and over the mead, gave thee clothing of delight, softest clothing woolly bright, gave thee such a tender voice, making all the vales rejoice. Little lamb who made thee, dost thou know who made thee, little lamb I'll tell thee, little lamb I'll tell thee, he is called by thy name. For he calls himself a lamb. He is meek and he is mild. He became a little child. I a child and thou a lamb. We are called by his name. Little lamb, God bless thee. Little lamb, God bless thee. So what do we notice about this poem? Well, it's comprised of five rhyme couplets. A, A, B, B rhyme scheme. There is a repetition, uh, uh, particularly in, a, in the refrain, there's a kind of a song-like aspect. Um, the first two lines end in the, um, and in the, 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 the first stanza, the final two lines also end in the. So there is a song-like quality, flowing of vowels. Uh, and, and the important thing, I think, from this poem is that he's trying to present a theology or image of God from the perspective of a child, um, from from a child's voice. So that's not what we, well, that that's highly. I mean, that's we never get that. I mean, to to have a theological teaching from the perspective of a child, um, I think that's quite quite telling. Uh, and that sort of the the view of. Uh, God being so, uh, child, the, the, the childlike aspect of, of God um, and, and the mention in the, 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 the third to last stanza of we are called by his name that's referenced to Deuteronomy 28 10 
So there is that that pastoral quality to that they're linking the child, the image of the child, the image of the lamb, which is the image of Jesus, um, and linking that all together with a pastoral vision. Um, Albion, uh, his, his view of 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 England and return to a, a redemptive pastoral uh, mode of of living, uh, closer to the uh, his Christian ideal. Um, so so that's kind of the the optimistic, innocent aspect of uh, of, of of Blake. Um, well, let's compare that to let's compare the lamb to. The tiger from uh, the the songs of experience, where we see uh, Blake in a, in a very different comportment. So let me read the tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps of de deeps of or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art Could twist the sinew of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, What dreaded hand and what dread feet? What the hammer and what the chain? In what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp? There is deadly terrors clasp. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye there framed thy fearful symmetry? So, uh, very different. Uh, feel to this poem. Uh, six quatrains, four lines, uh, rhyme couplets, A, A, B, B, regular meter, um, suggesting that the, 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 the Smith's hammer, so we see in uh, the fourth quatrain the, the reference to hammer, furnace, anvil, so that kind of beating out God the Smith, beating out his, his creation almost. Um, so really, uh, that, that this 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 uh, particular a particular um, uh, Old Testament of of God for uh, God a forger forging creating creating the the world. Um, there, there is. We also see, in terms of structure, the the first, uh, the first stanza and the final stanza also ending in a wor word with the word symmetry. So we see the whole the whole poem is symmetrical and structured like almost uh, in imitation of a tiger's face. Uh, we we see that that the link with the hammer, the mention of the heart beating, that kind of. Um, uh, that that kind of Im combined imagery, uh, God uh, wielding the hammer and the heart beating, kind of uh, uh, that that kind of linked imagery there, um, and and then it raises a question: Did he who make made the lamb make thee? So. Comparing uh, Blake's reference to Lamb in earlier poems, um, so it raises a profound theological question: the the role of the existence of evil, or the very existence of evil, and a, and a God who created a world with evil. So this is this is a fundamental problem that he's uh, trying to get at. So I, I'll leave that here. That that idea of the 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 existence of evil within the creation of God's realm that's being explored in this poem. Uh, the imagery of the tiger um, uh, compared with the earlier imagery of, of the lamb. The focus now in the songs of experience is, is it's more from the perspective of the tiger rather than the perspective of, of, of the lamb. 
there's nothing really redemptive there's no redemptive tone about this this poem which um, is, is also characteristic of many of uh, Blake's songs of experience that um, it's really a, a ex exploration of, of the problem of evil um, a confrontation with it notice he uses ambiguous pronouns uh, the term he not a capital he uh, lowercase h so often there's multiple this elicits multiple ways of reading um, do we is he referring to he God or is he referring to he perhaps the tiger perhaps Satan perhaps you know uh, so there are uh, the use of the um, an ambiguous personal pronoun also raises possibilities for multiple readings which raises uh, which is quite interesting so in that sense when reading reading Blake I think one look at look at the particular do a number of readings uh, look at the particular read it for the structure read it for the feel the cadence sometimes just read it through just to get the feel the cadence the rhythm because you notice the, the rhythm of this one sort of amplifies and accelerates um, the heart beating and then the hammer it just just there's an additive quality an accelerative quality it's very different from the pastoral melodic quality of the the land so there's that aspect to it um, and then uh, so look at the structure and look at the imagery, the the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the the metaphors, the the constant changing fluctuations in imagery. Say, when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears. I mean, that's another feature of Blake: this uh, use of uh, th th this constant fluctuations in, in imagery. Uh, okay, so well, that's all I have to say about those two poems. Go through them, explore them, and uh, if you pick up anything else interesting, send me an email and we can um, explore these poems in greater depth. Thank you.